sticky spiced chicken wings. Jack, give us a hand, please, bud. Why? Because it's your favourite. Yeah? yeah? Chicken wings. OK. Right, let's start off with the marinade. Tamarind paste in first. All of that into there. All of it? Yeah, all of that. OK. Good, in. So two tablespoons of palm sugar, please. Is that like heated sugar? Um, that's a really good question there. It's, it's a natural palm sugar and it's perfect for marinades. How many wings do you think you've eaten so far at the age of 13? Oh, well, I eat probably 50 a year. 50 a year? Yeah, something like that. A nice sprinkle of chilli flakes. Depends how hot you like them. Oh, I love them hot. Hot. Uh, don't forget the girls. You know, they start complaining when you get them too hot. How come you love hot food? So... Um, I don't know. I surely love hot food. So in there we've got palm sugar, tamarind paste, chilli flakes, mm -hmm. some garlic, one nice tablespoon of fish sauce, please, Jen. This is looking really good. Isn't it? And then a couple of tablespoons of oil to marinade. In. How nice. Little taste. What are your finger, Jack? Mmm. That's really good. Right, wings in. Get your hands in there and start rubbing in the marinade, please. OK. So the secret now is to coat the chicken wings in all that marinade. Yeah? Yeah. How long do you leave them in here? Do you know what? The longer, the better. Cover that. Ooh. With clean film. Wash your hands away. Excellent. Good job. Ideally, marinate your wings overnight, but half an hour will be enough to get the flavours going. Right, so they're marinated now. If you take the tray out, please, love. Bottom one, thank you. And then we're going to put some tinfoil on there. Thank you. So, fold that in half. It stops them from sticking. And that will stop the wings from burning. So from there, get them really dipped in that marinade and try and get the wing like that and just sort of scoop it up like that. So get that really nice glaze on there. Mm. And then just, yeah, put that mm. on there. So all that garlic will roast. And then we've got all those wings beautifully done. I can make them ready for the oven. 170, 25 to 30 minutes. Yep. Good man. Excellent. Nice. It's hot. <laughs> Wings are in. Right. To go with my ultimate Southeast Asian dinner, rice cooked in homemade Thai green curry paste. For the easy green curry paste, roughly chop coriander, lemongrass, green chilies, lime leaf, shallots, garlic and ginger. A glug of oil and blitz. The paste takes minutes to make, but it'll keep for up to 10 days if covered with oil and stored in a sealed jar in the fridge. To awaken the flavours, lime, roll to release the juice. Next, season with salt and pepper and blend into a smooth paste. Heat the paste until aromatic. Add in cooled or leftover rice. I love using fragrant jasmine rice, but your standard long grain rice is great too. When thoroughly heated through, serve. Thai green curry paste is so easy to make, so with rice like this, it's incredible. But simply add to chicken, fish or veg to create a fantastic meal in minutes. Right, now for the green beans. Beans in. Uh, bring the water to the boil. What's the first thing I should put in there? Beans. Salt. Salt. So, nice pinch of salt in there. Yeah? So, make an amazing dressing. Two nice tablespoons. Yeah. Of the crunchy peanut butter, please. Why is it crunchy? It'll give it texture. And it'll be nice and sort of chunky. Green beans in. OK. Got the rice, the green beans. We're going to blanch them for two, two and a half minutes. What does blanching actually mean? Blanching means sort of part cooking. Oh. OK. We're going to blanch them in boiling water. Yeah. And then finish them in the pan. Use the back of the spoon, it'll be a little bit easier. A teaspoon of brown sugar. In she goes. Nice. Is that a little bit too thick? Maybe, a, yeah, it yes. is. Let's put a little touch more soy sauce in there, let it down. 
Yeah? Yeah, that's better. A little touch of vinegar. Nice. I'm gonna get a pan on now. Pour my beans. So, a little taste, can you taste it? It's so good. Oh, man. Mmm, wow. Mm. So if you get the garlic like that, and mm -hmm. just slice the garlic down like this. Keep the knife nice and flat. Mm -hmm. That way you'll slice through it. But take your time, don't worry about the speed. And technique right first. Just cut it in half. Okay. With your fingers, good. And then lay the flat side down, so it's nice and sturdy. Mm -hmm. And that nail there, it's not out like that. It's just guiding the knife, so you can never cut yourself like that. Good, I'll drain the beans. Nice, a little tablespoon of oil. Get the pan nice and hot. And throw the garlic in, people. Good. Nice. Mmm, so fire the garlic. I can smell that already. Isn't that lovely? So give that a little toss. So when you toss it, push it down, push away and pull back. OK, have a little go. Push it down and gently, that's it. Take your time. Nice. So push down and yeah. pull back up. That's it. Nice. So it's getting nice and golden brown. Green beans are drained and they go in now to the garlic. Mmm. Wow. Combination of green beans, OK, with the rice. Have a little smell of that. Oh, mm. wow. I want you now to yeah. spoon the dressing with these. In she goes. Nice. How delicious does that look? Wow. What's Daddy's policy at home? No waste. No waste. No waste, but Now. Smell that now. Mm. Oh, wow. That. It doesn't smell of green beans. It no. smells of... Oh, no, it is. Oh. Thanks. How nice is that? Mm. Lovely. Amazing. Right. That's the rice. That's mm. the green beans. Now, I want you to sprinkle some toasted sesame seeds on top, please. Nice and generous with the sesame seed. I'll give the beans a little bit of a crunch. Now, all that's left for your favourites to come out. Don't those beans smell amazing? Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Jack, look at those beauties. One for me, one for you. Three for me, one for you. Now I'd like you to sprinkle some spring onions. Cool. On top, please, mate. Nice and generous. You've transformed a very cheap and cheerful chicken wing. Yeah. Right, let me take them over. Please do not drop them. Okay. Jack. Let's go, bud. Nice. This is my ultimate simple Southeast Asian dinner. Sticky, spicy chicken wings, Thai green curry rice, and fantastic beans with chili peanut dressing, guaranteed to get the fussies of eaters into greens. Made with fantastic chicken, cooked using a classic but simple French technique, this is my ultimate home-cooked French dinner. First job, my chicken fricassee. Tilly, would you mind helping Daddy with the chicken fricassee, please? We're going to start off with browning all the chicken off nicely. Pan on. Get that nice and hot. What I want you to do for me first is to season Chicken with salt and pepper, please. Thank you. So that's on one side. Then we turn the chicken over. So we season it on the other side. Salt, good girl, and pepper. Nice. Now, this is almost like a chicken stew. OK. What's that there? Mm, thyme. Thyme. Good girl. That What's that one, one there? That one's rosemary. That's right, rosemary. And because this is quite a rustic French dish, we don't need to chop everything. So you get the garlic and you just bash it like that. Now smell. Mmm. Ooh. Right. So that's nice and hot. Put a tablespoon of olive oil in there, a couple of glugs. One, two, good girl. Put the chicken in. And you lay away. You get that nice and brown. You're getting good at this. You are. Skin side down. So we get the colour on the skin. Now, I just want you to cut the mushrooms in half for Daddy, please. 
Okay. okay, these are chestnut mushrooms. Which there are, are lots of different types of mushrooms, aren't there? There are lots and lots of different types of mushrooms. Which yeah. one's your favourite? One of my favourites is the Giro mushroom. I like mushrooms that are a bit bigger than this. And um, some dinners with Mum, we cut out the middle, put pesto and cheese in it, and then we bake them. Oh, oh. so I want you to sprinkle the pancetta over the chicken, please. Good girl. Nice. Can you put the mushrooms in. Not yet, because I'm going to get some colour on the chicken first. OK. And as that pancetta starts to cook down, it puts a really nice flavour on the chicken. Yeah. So we're sort of sauteing everything, OK? Right, garlic in, please. Good girl. Just throw them in. And I want you to sprinkle the mushrooms on top of that. Good girl. And then there's the rosemary. OK, yeah. you get your fingers like that and you pull it down. You take it all off. Hold it. Put it down. Good girl. So now you've got the nice little rosemary sprigs. I want you to do the same with the thyme. Now, the thyme flower is a little bit smaller. What different flavours do they give? So the thyme is a little bit sweeter, OK? And the rosemary, a little bit more savoury. Which ones do you like? I like them both, because they both give a nice flavour. Don't they? So, bay leaf in. I'd like you to put that rosemary I'm and sorry. thyme in there, please. Lovely. Sprinkle it over. Right. I'd like you to stand back now because we're going to flambe this. I do not want to get those little slippers caught on fire. What are their names? Rumpo and Judith. Judith. Nice. OK, great. Ready? Yeah. In with the brandy. And then just tilt the pan gently. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. How cool is, is that? magical. Beautiful. A bit like a cauldron. All the cognac has been Flambe, so there's no raw alcohol anywhere. So we've got a really nice, deep, rich flavour. I'm going to add my chicken stock. You know, Rumpel likes that. Not my slipper, Rumpel. Rumpel the dog. Ah, Rumpel the dog. Well, he likes chicken stock. Yes, when he's a good boy, he gets um, he gets it in his um, with his biscuit. It's gone in, like, wow, really quickly. Simmer and reduce the stock for around 10 minutes. Now, we're going to cook the most amazing potatoes. Soda potatoes are really simple to make and absolutely delicious. Start by slicing the potatoes into finger-width pieces. Then parboil them for five to six minutes. When you cook something like rosemary or thyme or mm -hmm. basil, does it slowly let off the flavour into the pot or...? Very much so. In a hot pan, add a tablespoon of goose fat and soda the potatoes until they turn golden. And add in shallots, garlic, rosemary and thyme. That goes in, over top. And that goose fat now is starting to fry the potatoes. You just leave that sat there. To complete my ultimate French dinner, my version of a classic, a glorious lavender creme caramel for dessert. The first job is the lavender sugar. You can buy this ready-made or simply add dried edible sprigs of lavender to caster sugar and store. You can also try this trick with vanilla pods and cinnamon to bring new subtle flavours to sweets and bacon. For the creme caramel, melt plain caster sugar until it turns dark golden. Pour into ramekins, sprinkle with lavender flowers and cool. Now, to make a simple custard, gently heat whole milk in a pan until steaming. Meanwhile, whisk together egg, vanilla seeds and lavender sugar until golden and fluffy. Then gradually pour the hot milk into the mix, whisking continuously until the custard is smooth and creamy. To set, cook in a water bath or bain-marie. A good tip is to line a roasting tin with a cloth to stop the ramekins jiggling around. Pour your custard, then boiling water around the ramekins until halfway up the sides. Then cook in a preheated oven for around 30 minutes until set. Cool in the fridge. Then when you're ready to serve, dip the ramekins in hot water to loosen the creme caramel. Et voilà, lavender creme caramel. Look at that chicken now. So I'm just going to turn the gas right down and put the lid on, just like that but leave a little bit. So it can let out some steam. So it can let out some steam, that's right. Now, what I'd like you to do is to chop daddy some parsley. Crunch it up nicely, tuck your fingers in, and take your time. 
Mm. Now my hands have got lots of different flavours. Nice, got all those wonderful flavours. You could almost be French. Mm. Huh? Matilda, sprinkle that on there. Good girl. Nice. Merci beaucoup. Damn. Nice. Now, potatoes. I'm saying it's a chicken. I can tell Jack's going to love this. Is he? Looks delish. Doesn't it? Smells delicious. Look at that. Mm. I could smell that even before you took the lid off. Let's go, my darling. Good job, by the way. Thank you. I can't wait for the others to try it. I hope they love it. This is my ultimate French dinner. Chicken fricassee with sensational herby sauté potatoes and lavender creme caramel. The main course will be a crispy big Caesar salad, but the first job are my peanut butter and jam cookies. Start with the cookie dough. Simply combine muscovado sugar, peanut butter and butter into light and fluffy. Then add your egg, a splash of milk, vanilla seeds, and beat again until smooth. Sift together salt, baking powder, and flour. Then mix until thoroughly combined. In floured hands, roll the cookie dough into golf ball sizes. Flatten and create an indent with your finger. Fill with half jam and half peanut butter. Place the cookies on a tray lined with baking paper and bake in a preheated oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Cool before serving. Next job, main course, and my take on an iconic American salad, first made almost a century ago. Caesar salad is definitely a classic. But the trick to keeping dishes like this modern and relevant is to tweak them but not lose what made them brilliant in the first place. Here's my version for the ultimate American lunch. My first twist is in the dressing. For me, the most important part of the Caesar salad is that dressing. Rich, creamy, slightly spicy. Begin by making a basic mayonnaise. Start off with the egg yolks. In just a little spoon, Dijon. And then a little splash of red wine vinegar. Start whisking. Once you've got that nice, slightly thickened texture, drizzle in your olive oil. It should fall through your whisk. It's like a nice, thick, double cream texture. Beautiful. Now take the mayo to another level with anchovies and crushed garlic. Now, chop up the anchovies and the garlic together. I sort of almost want that to be like a really nice puree. Then grated parmesan. Lemon juice. That will make the dressing citrusy, lighter in colour. And then a little splash of water in. Now, all of a sudden, it transforms that mayonnaise into an amazing, delicious, Light dressing. Nice. Next job, the croutons. And I like using crusty bread for extra crunch. And just dice up your bread. Season with salt and pepper, then add to a hot pan with olive oil and fry. Give that a really nice toss. As the croutons start to turn golden, simply grate on a generous amount of Parmesan cheese. Keep them rolling around, stop them from sticking together. You get that really nice, cheesy, delicious, Crouton, and now they're out. Now for the fun job, assembling the Caesar salad, starting with the romaine lettuce. And don't slice the lettuce too thinly. A squeeze of lemon, on with half of that gutsy anchovy mayo dressing, saving some to coat your chicken later. Then sprinkle half your croutons. Give that a really nice mix. Salad in. It's all beautifully dressed. Add the remaining croutons and finish with a good grating of Parmesan cheese. That, for me, is a perfect Caesar salad. However, I'm going to take it to another level and grill a stunning chicken breast. 
Start by preheating your griddle pan, then butterfly your chicken breast. Simply slice from the thin end towards the thick bit of the breast. Let the knife do the work and literally just open up. Now that's how we butterfly a chicken breast. So therefore it will cook twice as quick and just nice and moist in the center. Season the chicken on both sides with salt and ground pepper. Lay your chicken breast onto the grill. Never oil the grill until you're absolutely ready to cook your chicken. Now, turn them over. Uh, beautiful. Cook for three to four minutes on each side until the chicken's got those lovely stripes from the griddle, which adds a gorgeous smoky flavor. Whilst they rest, spoon over some of the remaining anchovy dressing. The chicken cools down, but the flavor, the seasoning of the anchovy, the garlic and the parmesan seeps into that chicken. Slice the chicken into strips. Mm. Wow. I serve the chicken warm in a separate bowl so it doesn't wilt the salad. Spoon of dressing. Finish that with a little touch of dressing. An American classic. I think one of the most popular salads anywhere in the world. But it's still one of the most delicious. When it comes to lunch, this really is an American dream. A delicious Caesar salad and succulent golden griddled chicken with peanut butter and jam cookies for dessert. Your favorite, chicken thighs. First of all, I'm gonna turn on the grill. The reason why we're using the thighs, i.e. the brown meat, is so it doesn't go dry. Season them nice. Salt, pepper, olive oil. Then turn them over, please. Go on, get your hands in there. Good. Don't worry about your nail varnish. <laughs> so there's no bones in there, so the chicken will cook really quickly. Why do you do it skin side down? Skin side down first. That will stop the chicken from going dry, and it will get it really nice and crispy. Turn it over. Good. See the way it's marked the skin now? Yeah. Got all that really nice flavour in there as well. And we'll turn them every two or three minutes. How much do you love chicken? Lots. Lots. We're going to serve that with some really nice chickpeas. First of all, we're going to make a little dressing, OK? One nice teaspoon of mustard in, please. A little bit of olive oil. A touch of salt and pepper. Give that a really good mix. And then you just squeeze lots of lemon juice in there. A little taste. That's nice. Mmm, that is delicious. Now look at that chicken now. <laughs> Colour there. Beautiful. Nice and crispy as well. Turn the gas down now and leave that chicken to griddle. Right, let's get the chickpeas done, shall we? Yep. So we've got peculiar peppers. So these are roasted, smoked Spanish peppers. Have a little taste. Mm. Mm. I would like you to chop up the cheddar berries. You take off the, the top and then slice them in half like that. Wash your fingers. I will. OK. So these are small peculiar peppers. Yeah, it's a bit sweeter. There you go. Watch your fingers, please. Watch your fingers, please. Tuck them in. Three finger rule. Come on, Holly. <laughs> you know the three finger rule. I've been telling you that since six months old. Good girl. You're fast, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> in fact, you're faster than Jack. Don't tell him. <laughs> He'll get him upset. Shut up the papers in. Yes, please. Thank you. Good. And then give it a little mix with your fingers, please. Lovely. <laughs> Rump holes. <laughs> Out. Come on. Out, out, out. Okay. Get out. Every time there's food, he's always there. He smells it from a mile away. So chicken's grilling, skin side down. Why is it on skin side down? Because it keeps it in moist. Keeps it really nice and moist, that's right. Now, we'll start the watermelon salad. Watermelon, feta, cucumber, pan nice and hot. Get the pecans, OK, and just sort of break them up. I'm going to start slicing the watermelon. Do you keep the seeds in? Yeah, seeds are fine. So you just make these little boats and go around like that. Now, with the toasted pecans, give them a little season, would you please? With pepper too. Um, no, just a touch of salt, thank you. Roll them around and just start to see them smoking, see? And now turn the gas off, please. We're just going to take half the cucumber and give that a little peel for me, please. That's so nicely dry roasted. Take them off. So from there, I want you then to slice around the seeds. 
And that's the watery part. OK, we'll keep that out. Wash your fingers, please. Nice. Am I still faster than Jack? You are still very fast. A lot faster than Jack. Now, cucumber on top of the melon. We'll mix it up in a minute. We're going to give that a nice little light seasoning. A touch of salt and a little touch of pepper, please. Crush those little bits. Pecans in there for me. Nice. Next, Greek feta cheese. This is kind of easy. Isn't it? Jack, that fat lump snoring, you've got to get him out of here. <laughs> Hurry up, mate, take him out. Fat, lazy lump snoring his head off. Come on, out. So we've got that nice juicy melon, the cucumber, and now the cheese. We need something to bring it to life. Have a taste. That's mm. sumac, OK? That is very citrusy. And we're just going to season that lightly. Now, what I want you to do is to sprinkle the pecans in there. Mmm. What's that? Basil. Mint. Mint. Sorry. Minty. <laughs> Sorry. You get confused with Basil, your boyfriend. No, Daddy. OK, good. Keep it that way for another 10 years. Fresh mint over. And then a little drizzle of olive oil. OK, don't mix it yet. I know you're dying to get in there, aren't you? Mm-hmm. And just some fresh lemon juice. Why'd you roll it? It starts to release all the juice. So now feel it. So it's less firm, a little bit more squodgy. No. It's all that lemon juice coming out. Now, what we need to do is just have a little taste. Mm. Mm. What do you taste? Everything yummy. It's fresh, isn't it? Mm. So that's the salad done. Next, a refreshingly light dessert of lemon and basil granita. Start by putting the juice of seven lemons and the zest of one into a small pan with a sprinkling of caster sugar. Stir over a medium heat until the sugar dissolves. Dilute your granita mix with a little water. Pour into a freezer-proof container, stir in a good handful of chopped fresh basil and place covered in the freezer for three hours. When the granita is frozen around the edges, lightly break up the mixture with a fork. Return to the freezer and repeat twice until the granita is frozen with a granular texture. Spoon into chilled serving glasses. Garnish each with a sprig of basil. Amazingly light and refreshing lemon and basil granita. With our granita and feta salad done, and the griddled chicken beautifully charred, we can put the final touches to our main course. I'll take the chicken. Look how juicy that is. See? What we need to do now with the basil yep. is to get the leaves. I just want to tear them in there. There you go. Eh? We'll start lifting the chicken up, please, and putting it in the chickpeas. Oh, that juicy, amazing chicken. Remember this little baby here? Yeah. A vinaigrette? The heat of the chicken will infuse the basil, because the chicken's nice and warm. Melts the basil and turn this salad into something really delicious. That smells so nice. Doesn't it? See how we've glazed the chicken? Slide that onto our plate. How gorgeous is that? Very. <laughs> Got that roasted pepper flavour, fresh basil, and those wonderful chickpeas with the caper berries. I think Jack will like this one. You think Jack will like this one? Yeah. Yeah? And Megan? And Tilly this one. And Tilly... Really? Interesting. Let's go. Well done. This is my ultimate light dinner. Griddled chicken thighs with chickpeas and a lemony dressing. Feta and watermelon salad. And for a refreshingly zingy end to the meal, lemon and basil granita.